So in light of the uh, recent events of Japan, if we were to experience a worst case scenario incident within TriMet's emergency planning, how long would it take to get all services back online and how would services be reallocated in the interim? Well, there's obviously a lot of it. It depends on the event and um, the response. But let me just address emergency preparedness. Certainly the events in Japan have really focused us all on uh, our vulnerability here in the Pacific Northwest related to the same sort of major event. Um, the first thing I'd say is that TriMet is, is very tied in to emergency planning activities around the region with all the counties and the major cities. We have a full-time person uh, dedicated to emergency management planning. Uh, we have our own emergency plans and we drill with all these agencies on an annual basis. So our hope is that that ongoing communication is and in, um, infrastructure planning and uh, at, um, and um, backup materials is really helpful in terms of responding to any event. I would note that related to the light rail system, uh, there would inevitably be some period of shutdown, but I think the good news is that most of the light rail system and certainly everything we're building uh, in the last few years and as we build ahead is going to be built to very high seismic standards. So while there still will be a shutdown related to inspection and making sure things are right, um, uh, perhaps if something may fall across the tracks, that has to be dealt with, but I, my, our, our infrastructure will be pretty robust. The best example of that will be the new uh, Portland-Milwaukee River Crossing Bridge, which will be, um, a, first of all, a beautiful structure, but second of all, a very uh, seism seismically safe structure. There are some vulnerabilities in the system. One of the big ones is a steel bridge, um, one of the oldest bridges in, in town, um, and it, um, it has some big seismic issues associated with it. So I think one of the things that we as a region need to begin to think about is how do we begin to address some of these really critical constraints. That one has a particular problem associated with it in that it's owned by the Union Pacific even though it's primarily used by the public. So there's some, uh, some other sort of institutional issues that, that address that one. Finally, I'd say that um, one of the most uh, flexible, important uh, features of the trauma system, of course, is, is buses. And uh, as, you, as everyone knows, we often use our buses to respond to emergencies, even small ones around the region, where they provide warming services or a place to go or transportation if there's evacuations required. Um, so we would, I think, continue to see in the aftermath of any event uh, a large part of TriMet's fleet uh, used for those humanitarian purposes. And then second of all, we would begin to restore the service um, and we would obviously focus first on what we can do with the MAX lines after, after inspections and, and, and any work that's needed to repair. And then obviously uh, frequent service lines um, uh, come to mind first. Uh, but all that said, I think all that depends largely on the circumstances of the event, and those are very hard to predict. Will TriMet consider purchasing articulated buses for high capacity lines? Is TriMet willing to look at double de decker buses like those in Vegas, or of course London uh, for long haul, limited stop, maybe BRT light service? Um, you know, we have looked at this question and there are a couple lines in the TriMet system that would really benefit by the added capacity of articulated buses. Um, but there are also costs associated with it uh, because you're running a bigger vehicle during times of day perhaps that you don't need the, the capacity. And in addition, there are issues um, at some of our maintenance facilities that actually don't, um, don't fit uh, the articulated buses. Uh, so. Um, when we sort of put it all in balance, we would prefer right now still to just have a fleet of 40-foot buses. That, that said, I think there will be a time in the future when we want to begin to look at some articulated buses for some of the urban routes that we've got. Um, related to double-decker, you're right that the only thing that they really work well on, in my view, is long-haul um, services. You know, I know, for example, Community Transit in Everett, uh, Washington is, is purchasing some, but they're long-haul Everett to Seattle routes. Um, they don't work for the kind of service that really is the hallmark of TriMet service, which is frequent urban uh, mini-stop service because um, Frankly, the articulated buses work better because of more doors and more access and more ability to get in and off and the difficulty of sort of climbing the, the stairs to the, the top level. So I really don't see the double-deckers in our future just because of the practicalities and the, our service patterns. I do see uh, articulated buses not in the near term, but perhaps in the mid to longer term. 
Do electric trolley buses make sense to bring quieter, higher quality service to corridors where light rail or streetcars won't fit? You know, I, I have always been a, a fan of electric trolley buses. Um, but to be honest with you, as I've sort of studied bus technology over the last year, become more familiar with some of the technology, there are some really interesting advancing bus technologies, electric bus technologies, that I think we need to keep our eye on and may be able to offer some of the advantages of the trolley bus without the, the capital expense of uh, installing the overhead um, wire and the electrification systems. Uh, an example of that that I think is um, out in the industry is the Proterra electric bus, which has been used down in Southern California, uh, beginning to be manufactured in this country. It uses uh, battery tech and capacitor technology, uh, basically, to uh, charge at for 10-minute quick charges at the beginning and end of a line um, and then run for some distance uh, simply on batteries. Those are the kinds of technologies I think we really want to keep our eyes on uh, as a progressive region, I think would really, frankly, um, accomplish a lot of what I think uh, trolley buses would hope to accomplish, but do it perhaps at a more reasonable cost. I would say that we're keeping our eye on it because right now they are not at a reasonable cost. The per unit cost of those, uh, those kinds of vehicles are very high, but as with electric cars, we hope that over time battery technology will allow that cost to be reduced. The fact that streetcars are now being constructed locally has generated a lot of news. Uh, could TriMet start lobbying for the local development and manufacture of next generation buses? Can policymakers jumpstart bus production both as a showcase and a way to help upgrade our fleet? Well, I think it's a, I, I would love to see that. And I've actually, you know, um, wondered about that out loud to more than one person over time. And I think actually there, we, we should be beginning to look at that. Um, it's a lot more complicated because the bus, uh, bus manufacturers are pretty well established. For example, Gillig down in Southern California and, you know, many of the others, um, uh, New Flyer from Minnesota, and they're, so they're sort of established bases. One of the interesting um, pieces of that, though, is, of course, we have the former Freightliner, now Dambler, uh, uh, truck uh, manufacturing facilities. And many people don't know that Dambler is actually a major manufacturer of buses. And so we've had some uh, beginning conversations uh, about, about that. Uh, I think it's a big challenge uh, to think about moving a, a, an industry here. It'd be better, obviously, if there were some, um, some increment of, um, of bus manufacturing capability in the region. There isn't right now, other than components. So I think it's something we should continue to look at and look for the opportunities to do. I think one of the more positive things um, related to that is that the Obama administration is, of course, really focused on making sure that the, the funding that it produces is really producing American jobs. So there may be some opportunities that we can, can pay attention to in the future.